That was my first sale. We stood out in front of the house on the day of closing. His wife and I cried because we were so happy. If this would be over tomorrow, I would be very unhappy because I love what I do. Client events are the best investment you can do because they will not forget you. Your business will just flourish if you're giving back to your clients. It's not a big secret that you work with your fiance, correct? Yes. Yeah. Not a big and, secret. and so what came first? Did you fall in love first or did you start working together first? For me, the most important thing is to take care of myself. For me to start the day with the things that I need to do for Santiago, for Santiago to be out there in the world and you know, be able to be 100% of me. Uh, yes, I am on Netflix's Buying Beverly Hills. Oh my God. Yes. I'm not for everyone. I'm hardly what you would say vanilla. I am like uh, so many different shades and so many different colors. And that means I'm not gonna be for everybody. But I think having a point of view as a strong female, particularly on a show like this, that you know, when we're selling high-end real estate in Los Angeles, there needed to be a woman with as much um, dedication, commitment, and attitude, shall I say, um, to stand next to the two other guys on the show. I love it. And so, um, you know, I always say, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but hopefully I'm somebody's shot of tequila. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never related to anything more. That is so true. <laughs> um, so what what are you working on now? What are you excited about? What what would you tell um the Tracy on day one? Like knowing everything that you know now, what would you tell yourself 23 years ago? You know, I, I say this to a lot of new agents coming into the business. Work for someone that you admire when you come into the business, who's got that experience, who has that that footwork in the area that you want to be in, because I didn't do that. I came in thinking, I've got relationships. I grew up here. I should have had some credibility just from you know understanding high-end real estate, and I couldn't have been more wrong. And Eventually, I ended up joining a team and, you know, it turned my business um, around completely. What were you doing? Were you in real estate in those two years? Not at, all. With a Not at all. Not at all. So I was doing fashion public relations and then I was working at this restaurant. I did that for about four years. Um, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I have to figure my life out. I took about three years off where I was working at a seasonal restaurant, which is mean, means like just in the winter, just in the summer. And then I would travel. I traveled to like 30 different countries. <gasps> I went backpacking. I stayed in hostels. I volunteered in orphanages like in Vietnam, in Indonesia, in Peru. I taught English in an orphanage in Peru. I volunteered at an orphanage in Mozambique, like just did all these things. My mom's like, do these things while you're young, before you get into a career that you love. And I would like make a ton of money at these restaurants. Well, a ton at the time relative to like staying in hostels and backpacking. Right. And then I would backpack for like two months and just like live life. And then I came back. I had this really awesome table that I was serving at a restaurant. And this guy's like, you have this great personality. Did you ever think about getting into real estate? He's like, I think you'd be awesome. And I was like, well, yeah, but like, you know, I'm from Pennsylvania. And I have no clue about New York real estate. I watched the show called Million Dollar Listing New York. I don't know. And he's like, get your real estate license. Come work for me. I own a commercial real estate company. I got my license and I was like, eh, I kind of want to do residential. You know, I love New York City apartments. I think it would be amazing. So I went the residential route. And that's when I was like trying to get Ryan's attention for two years and trying to learn the business. And I was like, holy crap, this is really hard. It's not like these TV shows. And I was just kind of trying to figure out the rental business. Like I said, I did a $240,000 sale and I was like, yes, I've made it. I'm a real estate agent in New York. Like this for, for New York, that's a small, that's like a small studio, a walk up fifth floor. But I was like, you know, I was just like, this is something I can see myself doing as a career. I'm going to be working with Ryan and I'm going to keep following up with him until he responds. If this would be over tomorrow, I would be very unhappy because I love what I do. But life goes on yeah. and we go on. I remember when my second husband died, people would say to me, oh, I feel so bad for you. I feel so sorry for you. Your first husband left you and your second husband left you. He died. And I was like, I don't feel bad. I mean, I feel like... I was so sad, 
But I felt like my life is going to go on. Right. And we're going to make it work. We're survivors. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And you are much more beautiful in person also, because you know, I've been watching you. I can't even believe what you've done and where you've come with this, doing this. And it's amazing. No, I've listened so many times. You have great tips for people and you tell people things that nobody else even thinks to talk about. So I love it. Thank you. I'm going to continue watching. Good. I hope so. I hope I so. Will. So, so what was, so you go to the first day into the office, you're going to be a real estate agent and, and, and what do you do? Like you get there and like, nobody, nobody tells you, everybody thinks that like, you know what to do or like that the Always. buyer just waltzes in and you just show them like one, two, three banana street and it's $10 million <laughs> and you know, they buy it magically. They like, what did you do? You got to the real estate office 30 something years ago. And I went into the training program where they say, how do you think you're going to get clients? I was like, I don't know. I think I'm here for you to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, well, we suggest you sit open houses. Well, I don't sit open houses anymore, but it was grueling, I think. You sit there waiting for someone to come in. I had a few experiences that weren't that pleasant. Um, then you door knock. You do all the things that they tell you to do in the beginning, and that's enough for any real estate agent to say I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the most important thing that happens to us when we first get started is when somebody really does come in, I will never forget, I was sitting floor time <laughs> at, at the office and someone called me and I was like, oh my gosh, Tiffany, my one and a half year old at the time was on the floor and I said, come on, we're going to go show a house. Well, in those days there were lock boxes. And so I got the lockbox combination. I went to show the house. It was a Los Angeles Times delivery person. And he said, you know, I want to see the house. We go in. We, we're in there like five minutes. Come out. And he says, I want to buy it. Can you write it up? So I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> so I take him back to the office. Right. I call my trainer. He walks me through the paper. But... I didn't ask, can you afford this? How much can you put down? You have to get a loan. So the next 60 days were uh, my, my true training program right. because I learned that you have to get a loan <laughs> yeah. and you have to qualify and you have to put money down. So all of those things, I think in the very beginning, the best way to learn is on the job. Yeah. And I learned a lot. So it ended up his mother-in-law helped him with the down payment and the loan and we closed and we stood out. That was my first sale. We stood out in front of the house on the day of closing and the, the mother-in-law, his wife and I cried because we were so happy. Look at the 10 year trajectory. Oh, you wish you bought, you wish oh. you bought, you wish you bought. Go back. I mean, you, you know, we talked about this yesterday and, and it's like you the most amount of money you'll make is when you do not sell however a lot of people don't have that luxury and they're not everybody is like you and I that wants to build a real estate portfolio many people look at it as you know having that many tangible assets is nerve-wracking to them they don't want to service them they don't there's a, a multitude of reasons why people don't always want to build a real estate portfolio they'd rather put their money in other things so it's you know but those that decide to build a true uh, diversified real estate portfolio you hold you hold you hold i burned the boats as they say so i kind of lost the this core business that i had for 10 years it was very lucrative but i hated it i really ah. didn't like it so it was easy for me to burn the boats and just say, Let, let's go for it. Let's go for go for it all and put it into a, a dot com, which did extremely well. And on paper, I was worth a fair bit. And then it blew up. But I bought a piece of property in Greenwich, Connecticut on the water. And I couldn't afford it. I was freaking out. Like, what? How am I going to pay for this? Some hedge fund guy was building a big fat house next door to me. And I would go in and and, and ask, like, put me to work. And I was like 40 years old at the time. I was like, just have me do stupid shit and look at, you know, measure and learn the business. And uh, I got into building. Year 2000, 1999 to 2000. And Get was... out. 
So you just yeah, went over to fun. the neighbor's house and said, put me to work, and that's how you learned? Put me to work. And he did. Oh, my stars. I cannot believe that. So there's something that you're doing that's really interesting to me, and that is this class that you have started. Yes, I, I teach a, uh, it's a uh, I call it a four-week mentorship uh, called Compete and Beat the Best. And uh, I've had so many experiences where I've been really successful for a myriad of reasons, had setbacks, and we all do. You do it long. We're in businesses that are, decades long we're not football players play six years so we have we have setbacks real setbacks it's all possible health personal business it all happens and I, every time i've had one i've come back stronger and i was really influenced by going from couldn't sell a three million dollar listing to five years later selling the playboy mansion and um and i remember i i beat out the best agents in the country for that listing. And I didn't have the credibility to get it. I just had an opportunity and it, that literally, and then I'd been speaking for like 15 years and the whole thing turned into, I literally open up my playbook and I teach a course on the four fundamentals of where all the money is. And, um, I really like it. I love teaching other agents, how to succeed. And I love getting the feedback. What's cool about this course is it's very actionable. It's not like you don't take it so you'll get all pumped and inspired, even though you will. We, I put people in to work, to work week one to do things that are not, but seem like magic to them. I have people walking away from after the first week with business that they've got that were, they literally got from buyers and sellers they forgot about. Right now, what is going on in your life, personally or professionally, that you're just super excited about? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I done with the show. Um, obviously, they filmed season six and seven. I wasn't part of it. I made the decision to focus in Miami. I don't want to be all over the place. And as much as I love selling Sunset, I did uh, start my own team here with Compass in um, Miami. And I love Compass. I love my team. We are four girls. Um, so that's very exciting and it's, it's a slow process, right? You build your group, you build your team and you're really trying to not, I wouldn't say take over a market, but at least be dominant in your market. And I, I work really hard to get there. It's going to be a time and process, but I'm very proud of what I'm doing so far. I'm excited. Also, I have my baby. She's four months old, my third, my third child. You know, I had a very bad trauma about a year and a half ago. I was nine months pregnant and I lost, I had a stillbirth. I lost my son two weeks before the due date. So, and it just shows you we have to take everything with proportions because real estate, we're always like rushing and stressing with clients until something really important happens to you. And then you realize, you know, what? it's not that important. Uh, so I'm very blessed to having my third, my rainbow baby. Uh, other than that, yeah, those are the things that I'm excited about. I love it. So you're on the East Coast with me, and you know I love Miami. Oh, my stars and stripes. Some days I think if I did not sell real estate in Atlanta, Georgia, I yeah. would love to sell in Miami. I love the international culture, mm -hmm. and that is a huge change for you from selling Sunset. So, And I know you're going to love it, and obviously you're going to be successful there because I think that, that success is very duplicatable for people that know what they're doing. And I have an all female team and I think that I think that women are are really the power brokers in real estate. So uh, I am excited to hear about that. How did you get into sports and entertainment real estate? So um, I used to be a basketball housewife but my ex didn't send me any clients. So I, I kind of shy off that. Uh, but I did, uh, I was married to a basketball player and we lived overseas for years, most of our marriage. Um, so I can relate to the wives, right? And I, when I tell them, hey, I used to be you, they get more comfortable. Um, it started with one basketball player that uh, was playing for the Nuggets and I housed him and then he referred his teammate to me. That teammate referred another teammate to me, and then I got the agent started calling me. Hey, you've housed a couple of my clients. I have other clients from different teams. I would love housing. Can you be our go-to gal? 
And, you know, because I was available, I would pick up all the calls. I was a hustler when I was in my 20s. Like, I was on the go. Um, and it just kind of started like that. It's all referral based. These athletes love to refer people. Or they're not just going to pick somebody out of a hat. They're going to say, hey, who do you use? And since then, I've been able to house the Lakers and the Chargers and the Clippers, most home teams, Dodgers and the Angels. Um, the Clippers and the Lakers, it's, it's, it's the home teams. We have four teams here in L.A., right? Yeah. So, Praise yeah. the Lord and pass the sports. I mean, it's such a sports-rich community. Yeah. So not only did you, like, um, know how to talk the real estate lingo, but you really could um, could 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 empathize with the the wife of the athlete that was was really keeping the home fires burning and probably just and, and you're right it's all referral based it's all word of mouth and once you kind of of are in the pocket of one person when you're dealing I, I think when you're dealing with the celebrity the athlete trust is the most important thing and the fact that you're not, you know, spreading their business, they they really want to keep that kind of close to the vest. And I'm sure that that is something that over your career, you have honed that skill and really built that trust in that community. What is your most productive event? Well, our team, the Gillette Group, we are actually all moms. My husband's on our team as well, but for the most part, we're all moms with kids and we have client appreciation events every single month. And before we come up with an event, we ask ourselves, we only want to host events that we would come to, that we would want to bring our kids to. And because I've leaned into my personal brand on Instagram, I'm not afraid to share my personal life. It attracts your tribe. So a lot of my clients are moms with kids. So we have an event every month. Um, some are in person, some are virtual. Like for Mother's Day, we just give free coffee to all the moms on Mother's Day. But we do Easter egg hunts. We rent out water parks. We rent out movie theaters. We do goat yoga, just a lot of fun things. And our clients love our events. We're actually doing a kickball tournament here in a few weeks. And we want to get our community together. And we built this culture amongst our clients where they're getting to know each other. And so many of them have moved from out of state and they don't know many people. So they can get out with their families, have a fun free event with prizes. And um, we get to talk to our clients every single month after they close. So they don't forget about us. And client events are the best investment you can do because they will not forget you and you will always like your business will just flourish if you're giving back to your clients. It's not a big secret that that you work with your fiance, correct? Yes. Yeah. Not a big and, secret. and so what came first? Did you fall in love first or did you start working together first? Oh, definitely fall in love first. And, and you know, it it's so funny because I tell people the story. They can't believe it. But I owe something. I owe my manager. Uh, a uh, hell of a uh, thank you at the very least. Cause when, when she first came into the office, he was like, Hey, I'm going to sit you, I'm going to sit her right in front of you. I said, okay. Yeah, that's perfect. I, I, that's perfect. And then that, that started the whole thing. So he, he was the, uh, he, he saw it all. He saw it all. He was completely like, he, he had the whole, you know, glass ball and saw the, the big picture. I had no idea. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, she's nice. And I knew she was you know, definitely stunning and attractive. And I knew that, you know, her successes and in, in what she did differently. And I just, part of the uh, connection for us is the fact that we both were starting over from successful careers and had the audacity to really say, you know what, we were successful here. We're going to do it again. And I think that was the initial attraction. And then I got to know her things, you know, propelled and, and, and became what it is today. But it's all, it's all Joe. He, he knows who he is. <laughs> I love it. I love that. You know, I think that some people would think that it's difficult to work with, you know, the person that you have a personal relationship with. I, I have the opportunity to work with my daughter and I absolutely love it because you have this built in implicit trust, Correct. not only in that person's, you know, integrity, but also in their capabilities. And I think that a lot of times when people say, oh, I could never, ever work with my significant other or somebody in my family, it's because they haven't really thought through the mechanics and also 
the beauty of having that type of relationship professionally and personally. No, absolutely. I think you hit the head on the nail on the head. You know the saying, you're full of sayings. But but I think the key is that <laughs> I think the key is that, you know, we understand each other's strengths. Now, I'll do I'll say one caveat. If we were in a brick and mortar and we were together all the time, I would go absolutely nuts. But thankfully yeah. in the state, we're in different places and we trust each other and we understand that we both don't need to be in the same place simultaneously. If you're right. doing this, no, it's going to be done well. It's going to be done effectively. I have nothing to worry about and vice versa. So, you know, it, it's been because we didn't always work together. We just recently started working together. So that was been a bit of an adjustment as well, is that we're coming together to be uh, one team. And you notice, you know, happy wife. The name of the team is Trisha Lee team. So <laughs> <laughs> happy so. wife, happy life. And you are a smart, smart man that you have already picked up on that. Yeah, there was no debating there. But I mean, it's just I, I understand my strengths with the television, the storytelling, that component of it. And we're both equally strong when it comes to negotiating and, and everything else about the transactional process. In fact, she'll be the first to tell you I actually um, kind of helped to train her initially. Um, and then she's great with establishing systems. She's, you know, self-proclaimed marketing maven. Uh, so we always talk about that. Who has a bit of marketing ideas and campaigns. But and then we're able to come together. And I think that's that's what's really important is that you maintain your own identity and your own brand, as it were, but yet we're still together as a brand. So that's what I think is really helps us to be unique that, you know, whether it be a client wants to work with me, work with her or having us both together. Um, that's one advantage you're having. You're bringing multiple, you know, strong agents together to help, you know, list and sell your property or at, or, you know, give you the uh, advisement you need through purchasing. So it's, it's, it's worked to our advantage. We like it. When I've heard you speak, you're so passionate about real estate and about your real estate business. And do you think that maybe that comes across in the energy, the vibe that you give? Was it like that in the beginning or was it just really that, that desire to succeed? Yeah. I mean, definitely, you know, if you have me, if you, if you you heard me speak before, uh, you know, I speak about real estate and every time I speak about real estate, it's not purely just about real estate. You know, I always uh, have a little bit of a conversation about energy and about other things that I believe in. And uh, now more than ever, energy is becoming a much, much more popular term and a more more used by, by everybody. Uh, and, you know, you probably heard the term like, you know, energy is the new currency right so i believe that you know if you have the energy you have the passion and you have that that communicated to the other side it is it, you know they become a lot more receptive right so when we talk about what are the things that you do every day or how many calls or this and that or being in many multiple panels in real estate you know for the last 15 years whether it's an inman or or any events that I get invited to speak in a in a in an event or being on a panel with a lot with with other successful real estate agents, it always comes down to where when they ask me what is it that I do and everybody's talking about how many phone calls they make on how many letters they send or how, how, with the ways how they touch people. For me, the most important thing is to take care of myself. Right. Uh, for me to start the day with the things that I need to do for Santiago, for Santiago to be out there in the world and, you know, be able to be a hundred percent of me or, you know, like if you, if you don't take care of yourself, I believe that you cannot be out there and represent the best self of yourself. So when, 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 when you talk about energy and passion, I feel like if someone goes door knocking and that person just woke up at eight o'clock in the morning or whatever time and roll into looking at their Instagram and eventually they, you know, go and look at their emails and there's an undesirable email or property fell out of escrow or so forth. You know, that, that feeling is going to carry for the full day, right? That sets a tone for your day, in my opinion. So then when you go on door knock or you go and meet or you have that listing appointment and you walk in that door, 
the energy that you're going to exude or the people are going to pick up is completely different than when I wake up in the morning, right? And I wake up very early because that's the time that I have for myself without interruptions. I don't turn on my cell phone until I finish doing all the things that are important for me. So when I go and show up in the, the listing appointment, when I go door knock, like the, the energy that I'm putting into it and how I, I talk to people, they, they definitely pick up, right? You have a energy field around you that uh, if you work on, you know, making it bigger, when you go and talk to people, people can feel that. So that's what I believe in. Let me ask you a question. So you sell all kinds of houses. What's the least expensive home you've ever sold? 300 And what's the most expensive house? Um, The most expensive house I sold was um, just north of 15 million. Oh, my stars. And so, so... When you're dealing with numbers that are like that big, houses that are that big, do you like, Mm -hmm. like what goes through your head about like how confident do you have to be in your abilities to just like have the, have the like husband to do that? Like, I can't even imagine like, how do you, how do you, how do you have the nerve to do $15 million house? Um, I think when we get nervous, it's because we want something really bad. I think that's the source of the nerves. Um, yes, it can definitely be harder and it's exciting going in for, let's say like your record high. Um, I would say that the job is still remains, uh, very nuanced. I think at that level, generally speaking with high net worth individuals, they're much calmer communicators are a little bit more um, disguised. The, they're generally a, a bit more sophisticated. So it's a little bit easier to communicate with them and back and forth. Although they usually know um, all the homes that have traded nearby anyway, um, g- generally speaking, or their team does. They often will have a business manager or a family office. But a lot of the times um, it's still... A lot of it still has to do with, I would say, two things, right? People hire who they know, like, and trust. I would say it's 90% of that is no. If they don't know who you are, either from a referral or from prospecting, you're out of the game. And then um, it's your job to be likable. And then as far as the trust goes, um, you have to be willing to articulate in an intelligent manner um, your take on whatever role it is that you're playing in that moment. Um, and what I mean by that is whether it's how you're a master marketer and advertiser, um, a case study on how you negotiated or, or how you relaunched something that your competitor couldn't sell and you sold it, um, or on market conditions. I know my, many of my colleagues, like John Grauman, for example, who you know, and also one of the founders of my company, Blair Chang, they'll always tell you, like, you got to know the market, you got to know the market, you got to know the market. I'm here to tell you that, yes, you have to know it, but you do not necessarily need to be an Encyclopedia Britannica to get the job. As I always say, my name is Glenda Baker. I'm a real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia. Send me a text, tag me at a post, give me a call. That's what I love the most because I'd love the opportunity to talk real estate with you today. See ya.